last time wandering the shadowed streets of Baldur's Gate. Within the dimmed chaos of the blushing mermaid, chairs crashed and tempers flared as an interesting figure emerged from the shadows. A curious man no taller than a gnome donned in dark robes and wearing a porcelain mask. His limbs swathed in bondages and bandages so no inch of skin could be seen. Believing the ruckus was mere entertainment for the night, he sat on the side shouting comments above the din. But he was soon thrust into the fray at the behest of Vishara unleashing the arcane power of Tasha's caustic brew upon the brawlers. In the aftermath of the brawl, as the dust settled and the dead were hastily removed from sight, a bond was forged between these adventurers and the small man. He revealed himself to go by the name of Belmont Gobbins and was searching his family. A familiar crow spoke more clearly with Lulin as to Belmont's predicament as the diminutive stranger was speaking quite oddly and held an unorthodox perspective. Mannerisms. He was in all actuality a machine. The revelation came and went as Salvatore expressed frustration over Lulin's behavior. The ties that bound the group remained strong, however. Apologies as well as understandings were made. Morning light brought with it new decisions and discoveries. The silhouettes of the permanently docked Low Lantern Tavern beckoned them forth at the dawn, its tall masts framing the visage of two perched ravens. Lulin exclaimed at the excitement of more animal friends to speak with, but her attempt to commune with the creatures only heightened tensions. The two birds exchanged looks and seemed to converse with each other before one took flight, the other remaining to stare blankly at the group below, failing to answer any of Lulin's beach, beast speech. Belmont then dispatched his, uh, his familiar in pursuit of the Flying Raven to learn of its destination. Salvatore reached into his divine senses, alerting him to an unsettling revelation of the scene before him, an infernal aura emanating not just from the remaining raven but from the very depths of the Low Lantern. And also unsettlingly, their newfound ally, Belmont, appeared to radiate hellish energy. Torn between the enigma of the bathhouse and the allure of the low lantern, the group chose the immediate danger and possi impossibly clearer connection to Elturel's disappearance. With Lulin's wild shape turning into a tiny spider nestled within Salvatore's armor, they ventured into the bowels of the ship. Within, they were greeted by the boisterous laughter of inebriated patrons and the overly merry Lorel Rathundrath. Salvatore smooth-talked his way around, paving the way for Lulin to explore deeper into the ship's belly. And thus brings us to the present moment, where the dimly lit interior of the Low Lantern Tavern casts long shadows over its patrons. The air is heavy with a mingled sense of ale and sea brine, punctuated by the occasional raucous laughter and clinking of mugs. In this den of sailors and schemers, every conversation is a potential clue, every patron a possible ally or perhaps foe. Upstairs, Salvatore Vishara and Belmont blend seamlessly amongst the crowd. Salvatore's deft conversation draws the patrons into a web of distraction, while Vishara's sharp gaze misses nothing. Belmont, an enigma wrapped in mystery, adds an air of intrigue to their ruse. Together, they create a perfect cover their presence an unassuming part of the tavern's daily tapestry. But below, in stark contrast to the lively taproom, Lulin, now a tiny spider, begins to venture into the lesser seen recesses of the Low Lantern. Each step she takes in her arachnid form is deliberate, a silent scout in a world too large and treacherous. The lower floor awaits, shrouded in mystery and potential danger, promising secrets yet to be uncovered. As the morning light begins to filter through the grimy windows, casting a muted glow over the taproom, our adventurers stand on the brink of discovery. What lies beneath the rowdy surface of the Low Lantern? What secrets are whispered in the dark corners of this maritime haunt? Only time and cunning will tell. Alicia, 10 out of 10 recap. Very good. 
What do you do? Out of character, more curious to see what Lulin as a spider does. Belmont just keeps up conversation to distract as many people as possible upstairs. Especially the bartender, since that's the only person he can guarantee is uh, working at this establishment. I think I, if I remember correctly, I was talking to like a sailor kid or something. Yes, you were talking to Hitoshi Jade. Guy to your direct right. Oh, I don't see. There's no map uh, on the screen. Oh, um, whenever you open up Fantasy Grounds, go to your character sheet and double click on your token. The token's on the top right. That opens up whatever map you're on. I just see Baldur's Gate. Did you double click on the top right image on your character sheet? Nothing's happened. Oh, oh, okay. It just took a long ass time. There we go. Sorry about that. Still getting used to fantasy grounds. And uh, there's a this. Or who's, who's, what's the description of the guy right above me? That is someone who appears to be part of the Flaming Fist. With, were they talking to us or just sitting there? He was just sitting there. Oh, hi. Young pirate. What are you doing in here? Which one are you speaking to? Oh, uh, the little guy. I'm going to focus on him then, since that's the last person I remember talking to, at least. Okay. Oh, pirate. Uh, I'm no pirate. Oh, what is you? What is your uh, job? Uh, I'm, I'm just a sailor. I came, uh, I came on a merchant ship, Golden Go, you know of it? Mm, so I don't think you can... the Patriot family. Ah, ah. Um, uh, Belmont's kind of just puzzles and tilts their head, even with comprehend language. I don't know if I can understand. Mm. Funny words, you say. Kind of just looks around. Uh, what is this scenario? Because I see just a lot of people grouped in the same area. So you are in what appears to be the tap room of the Low Lantern. Lorelra is behind the bar, along with Salvatore serving drinks, and there are a number of patrons as well as bouncers spread about the place. You see, Salvatore just makes eye contact with Belmont, gives a wink kind of little nod like you got this <laughs> I, I just I, I, I catch the wink at the last second and they just look puzzled turn around and, uh, don't even see anyone around and then just makes it quite obvious Salvatore who are you winking at oh, I'm just it's just it's a, it's nothing it's a little twitch don't worry about it oh you, you need me to check your eye I'm, I'm good. I think I got enough work back here to keep me busy. No, I just keep, you know, rummaging around and, you know, polishing a tankard and making sure that uh, drinks are full. Um, but I'll, I'll also um, kind of like lean over. The, how, how close is Belmont to like the actual bar? Like how far away are we? Like about five feet? Yeah, each square is five feet. Yeah, gotcha. All right. Um, I'm just going to try and whisper around uh, Hitoshi. That guy is very drunk, and I made him drunker. Good luck. Mm -hmm. I'm so happy you got a working job. Good for the family. <laughs> and just starts walking over to... Big, he, he, I assume he's wearing armor? Like, it's quite yes. obvious. Ah! And how... 
Oh, I was going to the one down. Uh, label oh, the bouncer. Okay. Uh, the bouncer is just kind of, you know, you might see some. Uh, let's see what he wear. Uh, you might see some strips of leather under like a uh, baggy clothing and stuff. Reminds you a bit of a thug, perhaps. Ah, oh, come on, gentlemen, looking at the two uh, men in front of me. More jolly, we in a bar. Usually I see people dancing and singing and drinking. It's your customs. The bouncer responds, oh, Ain't it time for you lot to go home yet? I haven't had sleep since we opened yesterday. What time is it in the game? It is early. Is you uh, woke up and you went right to the low lantern. So it's like 9, 10 a.m. Ah. I'm hogging a lot of roleplay. Anyone else doing anything? I had a question about that, actually. Uh, when we ended the session last uh, last game, um, I had, uh, Salvatore had given a, a tanker to Vishara um, to take over to the, to the Dwegger. Did I miss that interaction, or is that yet to happen? I think it, I'm pretty sure it was given, but he didn't like respond. He was really gruff. Okay, okay, rather cool, unapproachable. Cool. Thanks. Got it. No one does anything. I'm just gonna keep rambling to people. <laughs> uh, role playing wise, this guy has no clue, uh, so it's gonna be hard for me to like actually help out. Uh, if if Salvatore were to um, kind of scan the area and give a, do a little assessment, would would he be able to see um, where Lulin is? Uh, you remember dropping Lulin off by the steps going down. Okay, it, but I wouldn't be able to tell if she had uh, descended or not. Uh, she's a tiny spider, so you'd have to get like right next to it. Got it. Got it. Okay. Uh, well, I'm gonna I'm gonna turn to um, or rather, Salvatore will turn to Lorela and uh, and say, "Hey, uh, you know, you got any customers uh, below deck that might be feeling a little thirsty?" Oh no no no! Oh, uh, that one uh, is is long gone. He did his business and was out of here a long time ago. Oh yeah, I, I swear I thought I heard some people uh, kind of having a conversation as I was kind of seeing if if anybody else needed drinks up here. You sure no one's down there? Uh, no, no. I'd like to insight check that. All right, roll an insight. <laughs> I totally trust her. She is drunk. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Vishara. Uh, you get the sense that she is being honest, but again, she is drunk. Um, you know, who's really to say? She probably wasn't paying attention, um, as well as, like, if there is a person down there, like, what does she think when you say person? You know what I mean? Mm, mm. All right, well, if you say so, I mean, you know, I am just kind of on a, a mission to learn more about, like, how how our products uh, benefit your business. Do you mind if I take a peek down there? Or is that off limits? Oh, uh, go ahead. Like, do you store down there? Like, you got food and stuff? Well, how do you store and keep it fresh? This is around here somewhere. There's, there's supplies on the lowest deck. <laughs> no way to get them past, past here. They all have to come through the same doors. Oh, I got it. One way in, one way out. Hi, hi. That's that's smart. It's secure. I like the security. Well, if you don't, if you don't mind, I might, I might go check that out. I always love to learn. Oh, go ahead. Bodies up here, first. though. Oh, we'll be back. We'll be back. Well, when I hear parties up here, Belma goes, Whoosh. <laughs> <laughs> All 
Um, just kind of out of nowhere, he's been slumped over, but cheers for a second. Salvatore's gonna make his way around the mast and around the stairs, uh, and kind of uh, stand back up here by Vishara and just be like, uh, you, were you able to overhear all that just now? Under his breath, you able to overhear all that just now? Sounds like no, my, well, no one should be down there. But we just sent Lulin down to investigate. What are your thoughts? Um... Really, I think if, um, something bad happen had happened to Lulin, we'd have heard it by now. No doubt. This is, um, yeah. not exactly a um, subtle compatriot. <laughs> well, I mean, how, how loud can a spotter be, really? Well, um, Unless you're can she summon? Man. Can she summon her bear while she's a spotter? Do you know that? Uh, no. You can't cast spells while in wild shape. Do we know that, though? <laughs> Let's just say we don't know that. Huh? You, you may not know that. <laughs> like, Vishara has never seen anything like Lulin. She doesn't know what she's capable of. Okay, well, that, that might be something to consider. Um, yeah, I'm just, I'm realizing right now we just sent her on a solo mission into a dangerous, potentially dangerous area where I was seeing some weird stuff, so now I'm a little bit worried. Um... That, that might not be good. Um, the owner, she did give you permission to go down there, did she not? She did, she did. Uh, she's just follow me, you want to come with us, or? Um, I could accompany you, yes. Yeah, alright, I'm, I'm gonna go see what Belmont's up to, let him know what we're up to. And there he is. I'm just gonna lean against the the railing of the stairs and be like, "Hey, Belmont. Um, hey, you, you, you good? You feeling good? As like you you're having fun. Over, you um, you see him hunched over, and yeah, he's kind of like shuffling in place, like doing just slight movements. Like when you go to a club or uh, something, you might see like that one person kind of alone, just holding their drink by themselves, shuffling. They're kind of just yeah, doing that. And he, he, he looks over, surprised. Oh, oh and snaps seeing uh, someone he knows. Oh, thank God. I forgot where you guys were, and I, I just didn't know what to do, and I just wanted to blend in. I remember saying blend in. You did the right oh. thing. You look just like everybody else here. You could have oh, fooled thank me. Thank you. Uh, so, you know, we got Lulin. Well, uh, we can't leave without Lulin, and she went downstairs to investigate. Um, we hadn't really heard anything else from her, so we were, we were just going to do a little, little look-see, see what the deal was. No, oh, I hope it's more active than down um, up here. I I hope not, but, but maybe. <gasps> um, so I guess, I don't know. Are you, do we want to do anything else up here? Or does anyone want to try and pierce this Dwagger gentleman's uh, 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 defensive personality? I'll chat with him. You go downstairs. Good enough. Over and put my hand out. Right. And I'm going to be real careful just in case Lulin hadn't moved beyond the, st the stairwell to not step on any little creepy crawlers. Alright. You reach out a hand to make acquaintance with the Dorger, and he gives you an icy glare. Don't touch me. Not understanding the icy glare, uh, the meaning, but turns the hand back. Oh, I mean no offense. You seemed lonely, and he just takes a chair next to him and takes a seat. Well, I puts my cane leaning against the side of the chair. Hand is still always holding on to it. He never lets it go. Um, even when he's in, like, sleep or hibernation, whatever we call it. Um, he always makes sure it's in his hands. It's just his family. It's one of the last things that really remembers. And if it reads Goblin, you'd see runes on it. Excuse me, burps. What are you playing at, mister? Do you have business with me? Do I? 
Did I forget something? Dude, we already met. I'm so sorry. My memory's been a little fu fuzzy of late, and he kind of does a twitch. <laughs> if we'd met before, I'm certain you would notice. Notice what? My eyes don't work as bad as they used to. The people I deal with usually don't forget me. If they do, they pay a steep price. Oh. Are you a painter? You paint the portraits. I would love a portrait of you. I would help you remember. You are an odd one. Where do you hail from? Kind of twitches. It's out of character, him not. He's an honest person, but the one thing he was told was not to really give out his name too easily. Um, did it for everyone else without thinking, but I I'm Belmont. Just not saying the last name. Belmont. Pretty chance um, we don't see each other again. I think it's about well, time. Oh, those in my business you don't want to meddle with. I think it's about no. time I get out of here. You don't even have friends then? <laughs> A family? Families down in the caverns of the Underdark. I'm on the surface. Don't make you very many friends where I'm from. If you have family so far away and you are certainly are there, you must be really good at finding people. Could you help me find people? As he's like getting up to kind of go away, he stops and turns and you see his expressions change. Now he seems to be like interested, like, oh, what do we have here? He sits back down and now he's kind of smiling. And though it is rather appeasing, you do get the sense that there is menace behind it. I am very, uh... quite acquainted with the finding of peoples. Depends what coin you got to offer. Hmm. Has like a hard think. Grandma left many coins to the family. I suppose I can offer those. I don't have on me per se, but they're with the people we're looking for. He waves his hand. Bah! I need at least half up front. Tell you what, you come back with any measure of coin, we could talk again. I frequent this tavern often enough. Good place to find debts. Do I have... I'm just trying to see if I even have, like, one gold on me. Should have a I'm little not realizing... Bit. Right, that's what I... I... I'm you still have getting used to ten gold that. pieces. He pulls out a single gold coin, not understanding um, what he meant, and just puts the one coin front. Is that what you mean? He looks at you, like, confused, like, not really knowing how to reply. Eyes, a coin. I have coin. <laughs> eyes squint a little bit. More than that. Odd. Mm. But yes, you're on the line. How much are uh, we talking? Depends what you're looking for. Are you looking for me to find people, or are you looking for me to, uh... Do something with them once I find them. No, no, find my family. Just find them? They went missing. I'll take him, I should say. Hmm. Tell you what. Business has been good. Give me five gold coins as a down payment, and then once I find your family. You'll owe me the remainder. Ten gold pieces. He puts five gold, or four more pieces, because he already had that one gold down. 
Or do you say five more than that or five in total? Five in total. Okay, yeah, so he puts four more down with no hesitation. Yes, find the family. And he spends a second to look through his bags and he carries many little trinkets and stuff, like probably has like a little kid's toy for any of the kids in the family um, and tries to find just a painting a resemblance of one family member. Um, he's always with the family, so he's just like not thinking properly. He doesn't understand people, but he knows like dogs smell things and can sometimes find things. I'm sure he knows dogs and maybe he even smells and finds things. So he takes uh, that and one of the stinkiest ribbons, socks or something and hands out. This help find them. Yes, that would help. A little bit of anything is useful. He holds out a hand. I go by the name of Grimboot. Well met, traveler. Tell me what you know about your family. Anything. Well, we are the goblins. I come from a line of goblins. Uh, it's quite a long line since the life spans aren't too vast as Dwargar or humans are. Um, many artificers, blacksmiths in the family that uh, are known for bombs and trinkets. Uh, you may have heard of my great, 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 great 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 grandmother granny gobs the goblin uh, she once tried to blow up i'm um, trying to remember it i think it's outside never winter that giant mountain that has the volcano and a different campaign oh no yeah like where the the fire elemental is she tried to uh tried to blow the mountain up yeah mountain Ho mount houghton now i think she made an attempt Ah, the goblins. I may have heard of the thing or two. Uh -huh. Where is the last place you saw him? And he does remember the rest of the party warning him of like the hesitations. Um, they were in the area. To be specific, they said they were at, and he leans in to try and say it as quietly as possible and names the city that disappeared. But he does say that there may be some that were able to escape. But he doesn't know. Ah. Well, that answers my next question about where they were headed to. <sighs> Suppose they'd be headed anywhere safe <laughs> if they escaped. Hmm. This will be an interesting little find. Anything else you can think of? Mm -hmm. Wow. Uncle Gobbins was a paladin. Um, he went into Undermountain once and did come out. Didn't get very far, though. Uh, like the only two that really made a name for themselves I can think of. Uh, so, family of gnomes disappeared from the east in that great tragedy they're all speaking of in this town. Gnomes, too? I believe you were talking about gnomes, right? The Goblins family? Oh no, we Goblin. We Goblins. Goblins? I didn't realize. <laughs> I am a Goblin, and they are... We are go 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 Goblins. And he slams his hand on his chest for a second. He gives you an odd look and kind of chuckles to himself. <laughs> Well, that explains the bandages and the mask. Hey, Probably good to keep that get up on. 
might not be the uh, best place to uh, be seen in a city. Well, Baldur's Gate might be better than others. No, and I'm sure you can understand some people can be racist to our kinds. Oh, certainly. Though in my case, they're usually probably hitting the mark More closer. Oh, well, oh, you've been no. so kind. I am, I am not what you would call a uh, honorable man. And I put this, my hand back out and say, you have been quite friendly and honorable to me. Thank you for helping. At this, he actually turns invisible. Oh, shit. And you hear his voice close to your ear suddenly. Don't worry. Give me a little bit of time and I'll find your family. Till then, go up here uh, maybe in about a ten day. We'll see what kind of answers I find. He immediately uh, makes a note of that and then Percy's just been hiding in his hood and just whispers to him of them. Don't forget that too. Ten day. And for a second though, when he did disappear and before he spoke in my ear, that little second he just kind of out loud would have, oh, why was I talking to myself again? And then realized when he hears the whisper, oh, you real. Like my way down with everyone else. Okay, and at that we will go to Salvatore, Vishara, and Lewin as they begin move down the steps. I'm on the wall so that they don't, they won't step. No, I didn't want anyone to step on me. So after he got me off, I headed right to the wall. Okay. Good to get you all. Oh, there we go. I was like, can I see? Yeah, it's a Ooh, little... Nice. Kind of weird with this. Okay. Uh, well, I'm, I'm gonna... As soon as we get down here, um... I mean, just immediate scan. Like, am I noticing anything upturned, unusual, uh, out of place, um, or, you know, I guess smashed, broken, anything like that? Anyone that wishes to can make me a perception check. Since I was talking, I was probably a few seconds behind any of them. Uh, um... Looks yeah, great. Oh, up the stairs or go to? We're downstairs. Yep, you went down the steps. Why does it say go upstairs? I just hit that. Hit now, and it kept me here. Okay. Um, my perception. Where's my perception again? It would be on your skills tab on your character sheet. Ah. It is. <laughs> oh, brother. Okay. <clears throat> As you all move down to the lower deck, you see a lounge. It is lit by oil lanterns hanging from an eight foot high ceiling from one foot long chains. It is windowless, containing a bar, couches, coffee tables, and tables where patrons may socialize, probably gamble. 
There's a pair of couches and a coffee table near the aft wall. Which is at the very back. Here. Seems to be placed together as a sort of makeshift office. Other than that, uh, it seems left alone. Kind of, it's almost as if, like, in the middle of a party or socializing, um, people left. It's like, people don't come down here to clean up and make it all nice in between bar nights. Stuff is kind of just left out. Got it. You said, you said a part of it looked like a makeshift office? Yes. Is that the the north side? Yep, right here. Cool. Is there any clear, I don't know, ledger or documentation or anything that looks like business documents uh, on, on the table? Make me an investigation check. You look around the area kind of checking for any hidden compartments or places where a ledger or anything of the sort might be kept or even hidden. You don't find anything. Got it. Um, I, I guess I'll just uh, raise my voice a little bit to the rest of my crew and be like, hey, any of this, any, anything look familiar to y'all? I don't know. Um, might be a dead end here, but there's another set of stairs. Um, no more. Yeah. You mentioned it looks like people just sort of like left in the middle of a meeting. Could I try and figure out like how long ago? Specifically, what I mean is like this place. This place doesn't get cleaned up between nights. It's like it, not not saying like there was. A, it looks like there was a meeting and people up and left suddenly. It's more like you know people came here, um, did their business, hung out, whatever, and then left and like nobody cleaned up after them. So it just seems like people come and go. Ah, it it is the early morning. People could have just not gotten down to business here yet. Yeah. I don't know if that changes what you want to do. I just wanted, I, I felt like I should probably explain a little better. So if we were to see, you know, half full ta tankers or yeah. quarter eaten block of cheese, it wouldn't be necessarily out of the ordinary. Yeah. Very well. Um... I mean, I, I am kind of curious to keep looking further down. I mean, y'all, when I when I was using some of my uh, uh, observational powers earlier, I, I felt like I sensed, some, sensed something kind of deeper in the hole of the ship. If this place is empty, then I mean, something's got to be here. Um, could you do it again? I'm gonna do it again. Like, now that we're inside to uh, pinpoint it better, I suppose. I, I activate my divine sense and reach out to see what I can feel. All right. <clears throat> Before that happens, Belmont, you have been given a Twitch advantage. Basically, you have an inspiration, an advantage to use at your discretion this session. Salvatore, you reach out with your divine sense once again. And specifically, divine sense. You feel the hellish presence at that makeshift office area that you had just searched. Just for a moment, and then it's gone. And as you look over, you're like, no, I know what I felt. 
And now you're kind of looking like, what the hell? I don't see it. Or is it? So did I see a, a shape of something? Or I just sensed something over there uh, you while just, my back was turned? You just sensed a presence. So specifically, okay. a divine sense... It's a little tricky. Until the end of your next turn, you know the location of any celestial fiend or undead within 60 feet of you that is not behind total cover. Mm -hmm. That's kind of the tricky thing. Uh, I'm going to look across the, the railing of the stairwell and just under my bath go, Bishara, I think something's back over by those couches. I'm going to go check it out. Oh, they gave me disadvantage as well. <laughs> Freaking squeege, man. Um, so the, the, the thing I was sensing is no longer there. Or I, I can't sense it any longer. You can't sense it. But you know, even if just for a moment as you reached out your divine sense, you sensed something. Mm hmm. How heavy are these chairs and tables? You think between Bashar and myself we can move them? Oh, yeah, definitely. Bashar, you mind uh, helping me do a little bit of interior decorating? Yeah, sound of rearranged some furniture. You bet. Uh, this, uh, the north uh, eastern couch, I just want to move it a little bit, see if I can see behind it. And then I'm going to do the same thing in succession with the, the, the table and then the, the couch on the um, northwest corner. And then if nothing's there, I'm going to move the rugs to see if there's any trap doors or anything like that. Okay. <clears throat> As you move out to begin rearranging this furniture, investigating a little further, you suddenly hear the scuffle... small creature and before your very eyes bristling before you you see one of these creatures jump up from concealment behind the couch standing on table its spines erect hissing <laughs> Oh, oh, what are oh, you hey. doing here? What are you looking for? A master just, would not like you prying. We're not looking for a master. Who, who are you talking about? <laughs> Is the little spider in over its head? Tell me. I haven't the faintest clue which spider you, you were speaking of. You're going to have to be more specific. This is kind of an old rundown ship. I'm sure there's a lot of spiders here. What is it you seek? Answers. Answers we have. I guess the first answer I'd, uh, uh, I'd like is uh, who's we? If you wish to trade in information, come back later this evening. A master has much share. Oh yeah, what's, what's your master's name? My name's Salvatore. Come back and find out. And I suppose I've been terribly rude. What's your name? My name is Kashara. Well, it's a pleasure to meet you, Kashara. Uh, it's a, the, I'm a, above the table. I'm assuming that pike in the picture is being held currently. Yes. And this right. is a okay. small creature. Below four feet tall. 
Yeah. All right, and just for my notes purposes, uh, one more time, what was the name? Kashara. I have that written in the... App. Oh, okay. Thank you. Um, all right, Kashara. Uh, well, it's a pleasure to meet you, and uh, it's a very cool, scary-looking spike you have, um, or pack you have. Um, about what time later in the evening should we show up? It sounds like there's quite a bit that we could learn from you. Under the cover of darkness. Okay, under, under when it's dark out. Got it. Got it. Um, say, you know, uh, you you have any uh, stakes in me continuing to go further under deck here, or is that is that a non-starter? I'm not trying to start any trouble. I'm really just trying to learn about this place. It makes no difference to me. All right. Uh, say, uh, you know, I don't, I don't want to bother you too much here, but, um, what are you doing here alone? This entire time, you thought you've been kind of speaking directly to it, but you just now realize that it's had the same mischievous, devilish grin on the entire time. It's razor sharp teeth kind of poking out. You realize that you've been hearing this and conversing with it completely in your own head. Oh, shit. Uh, I'm just gonna look around as Vishara, like, can I see Vishara? Yes, and Vishara heard none of this. Um, okay, well, I'm gonna turn to Vishara. Uh, hey, are you seeing what I'm seeing right now? Um, I can see it, yes. Can you hear what it's saying to me? Um, no. You were speaking to it. What did you say? Uh, I asked who it was. I, I asked what it was doing here. And then I asked if I would cause any trouble by going further below deck. And uh, what I learned is uh, this this fellow's name is Kashara. Kishara? Uh, and... It is waiting for its master to return, and uh, it doesn't care where I go on this ship. But you didn't hear any of that? No, it, um... That's spooky. Okay. Um, so I guess I'm gonna turn back to... Um, this, this mystery dude here. And... Just concentrate really hard, squint my eyes, and try to telepathically communicate and say, uh, say, say something to my friend here. I don't think it thinks that what happened between us actually just happened. The creature is going to turn its gaze to Vishara, and you see the deep, dark, hellish red of its eyes pour into you as you hear a voice. Secrets don't come cheap. Bring coin when you come. And then it's going to, like, take its various spines and bristles, and they kind of go down a little bit. And you you sense that it's no longer aggressive. Well, all right. Vishara will look at it, and... Also, without speaking, with no effort, uh, like, extended on her part, will respond with her own telepathy and, um, just ask how much. <laughs> as many as you can spare. Uh, she will turn to Salvatore and um, just, uh, you wanted to go down further? Yeah, figure, uh, reckon of this, uh, interesting character won't give us any more information. No need to keep bothering him. Uh, so I'm just gonna tip my cap and say, see you tonight, and, and take a walk. 
but before I do, I'm going to come back down around here, uh, back to Belmont and Leland, um, say, Hey, uh, that an interesting creature just now. Um, Belmont, I think you two would get along just so well. You might want to go introduce yourself. And then, and then I'll, um, uh, walk back up here and I'll be like, have you met Belmont? And then I just walk away, walk downstairs. <laughs> you did not just pull that. <laughs> <laughs> he absolutely did. <clears throat> so you go down the steps to the lowest level. And you see what looks like a guest quarters of sorts. Guest quarters, sleeping quarters, and some storage. There are four alcoves set with cheap cots where drunks must often sleep off hangovers. There are four hammocks serving a similar purpose. And you actually see now that there are two unconscious drunks snoring away in the hammocks. Now, when I had my divine sense on before we entered, I sensed three entities. I found one of them. Is my divine sense going off around these folks? Uh, no, 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 no. You, there were the two entities, which were the ravens, and then the one inside, and you just found the one inside. Oh, okay, yep. okay, sorry. Yep. Thanks for the correction. All right. You also see that this area is prone to leaks, and puddles of water collect in areas where the floor has bowed, and the whole space reeks of vomit and urine. Cool. There is a room behind a closed door. The aft. Uh, what are the what are the drunk folks wearing? Uh, a uniform, just regular clothes. Just regular ratty clothes. Yeah, yeah. All right. I wanted to say, as I walk by, I get uh, Lulin in her spider form and put her in the back of my hood, so at least she's with us before going down. Okay. Uh, well, Salvatore will turn to uh, Bashara and say, I don't know about you, but I'm pre pretty curious about this door. Um, I don't see the harm in seeing what's inside. I try to whisper to them, what about the two drunk? I just say let them be drunk. But what if they get upset if they catch us? Uh, I bet if we slipped them some more alcohol, they might just let us pass. Did you bring alcohol? I can get some from upstairs. Seem to have full reign over this place. I mean, the owner just let us say we could go wherever we want. In fact, maybe we could just tell him that the owner said it was cool that we go. Okay, I like that. Well, I do it. Yeah, the sure. will test to see if the door's locked. Is not. There is a lock, but it looks to be rusted almost to the point of being useless. It is not in the locked position. She will open the door. But you should be able to, if you hover over the door, you should be able to click on it and open it. Nope. Within, you see a guest cabin is not currently occupied. Its furnishings include a bed, a wardrobe, an empty desk, and a chair. There is an oil lantern hanging from a rusty hook bolted to the mast. Uh, there are any, uh, I don't know, signs of personal effects, uh, some chests we might have access to, uh, or otherwise may be locked. It does not look that way. You may make an investigation check to search, though. Be 
feeling confident with this negative one. <laughs> well, hey, look at us. You don't find anything in these quarters worthy of note. After hmm. people make room uh, and start moving out, Belmont will take their own quick peek. And he, uh, mainly he's thinking of wealth because he just promised 15 gold or 10 gold. Um, when the guy finds him, he's like, well, I only have five, so I need to do something. So he's looking for whatever he can or clues to help friends uh, if he doesn't see gold. Right, go ahead and make me an I... investigation check. Did not... oh, oh, shit. Click. Why is it? Why is it not coming? Uh, try double oh, clicking. To... Uh, there we go. Ooh, with a twenty-three. Oh, oh, oh. Nice. Looking through this cabin, and it looks to be provisioned with a few knickknacks here and there, um, things that might have been used in the past of Low Lantern, but nothing of value. Um, it's a guest quarters, um, but it's it's pretty clean. There's nothing in here. There might be like a, a, a dirty rag or so that says, you know, it might have been used at one point. You don't know exactly how long ago, but there's nothing of value in here. He makes the bed for the person and then starts walking out. <laughs> well, I'm, I'm not seeing a lot down here, y'all. I don't know. I mean, maybe, do you think the folks that are sleeping might know something about what was going on in the floor above us last night? If they're drunk, I don't know. Hmm. Most goblins I know that get drunk just scream at you when you wake them up too early. I expect them to scream at us then. Uh, that's a fair response. Uh, all, all right, well, um... What if we wake them up with baked goods and meat and a fresh glass of water? Do you have that... I look um... around, I see an image of pickles or cucumbers or something over here, corn. He's just looking for any food. He doesn't eat, but he just knows other things need to eat. So he tries to find something to make it more pleasing to wake someone up. Literally, it could be a moldy banana or bread, and he'll still bring it over. Just whatever looks like food. Did we lose you, Nomad? Oh, I'm I'm sorry. My mind like went blank. <laughs> um, yeah, I, I was I was uh, I was thinking about a thing and I, I like zoned out. Okay, um, so you wanna you wanna wake these guys up, right? Yeah, okay. uh, Belmont was trying to find any kind of food that's around us to air water to wake them up more pleasantly than just waking them up. And I, I, the image-wise, it looks like cucumbers, pickles, or corn, or something like over here. Or okay. Just whatever. It does. It can be moldy bread. Doesn't matter. Just what is food? Because Belmont doesn't eat. So you do find some stuff that would serve your purpose, and you begin to wave it in front of one of the one of the men's heads. Doesn't seem to take an effect. Take a few more forceful measures, kind of push his stomach. Hey, hey, hey. Food, food, food. I take the pickle and I rub it around their mouth. Take a bite. <laughs> Wake up. And that's when you begin to see the body stirring. Oh, 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 what the hell's... Oh. Mm. Uh, who are you, who are you, what are you doing? You've never been woken up with food before. I hear it's quite lovely. Uh, turn down the lights. Oh, my aching head. You look around and you see that the lights are actually rather gloomy. It's like, holy cow, this guy must have had a lot to drink. Mm -hmm. uh, what in the nine hells do you want? 
Why are you waking me up? Where am I? It's time to get ready for the next day, sir. Boss will be coming. Oh. Oh, shite. Uh, I'm in the bottom oh. of the low lantern, aren't I? Did you forget? Uh, that's right. Look at me now. Did you forget who your boss is? My boss? Ah, oh, shit. That's right. Speak his name now. <laughs> You've forgotten who your own boss is. How dare you My work boss? in this establishment and can't even remember his name. Kendrick! <laughs> hey! I was supposed to be at the docks at dawn! I suppose that's that now. <laughs> what time is it? I say exactly whatever time it is. Okay. Oh. Let's do it. Well, I'm better be off soon. If there's any hope of me keeping my frickin' job. Oh, God. Now that's what I'm worried about. You sleep in, and for a moment there you forgot who you even worked for. But I'm happy to see that, uh, you're getting yourself together now. Yeah. You know what? You look like you could finish a nap. And I pass the food over to him and kind of like tuck him in like a child and take a, take a breather. I'll get things started for you. Uh, uh, I'm already late. <laughs> Fuck it. Find a different job. God's damned city. Uh, Focus on the what? hangover. Don't make a habit of frequenting Low Lantern. Makes for a good time, but a bad life. Why would you say that? It looked like a great time last night. Oh, <laughs> it was. It's the morning after that gets you. Oh, I still forget can't how many keep my people... Eyes open. We had some big names here last night, didn't we? Who was that? Who Who were those people we saw? I, I know I saw... That's on the tip of my tongue. Well, that... That loan shark was here, and he was passing out gold like, like he was a, a newly rich man. Oh. Said business was booming. He's passing out free drinks to everyone. Lorera said she was gonna keep it going till the morning. Are they and still going? Uh oh, morning's almost over. <laughs> well, she kept her promise. Myself, I was drunk under the table. Would you pass out? <laughs> Hells if I know. Don't think I would have made it all the way down here myself. Did you see the sun? Mm, sadly, no. And you didn't party hard enough. Uh, maybe. Maybe. <clears throat> Uh, if you don't mind, my aching head is pounding. I think I am going to take that nap that you spoke of. Oh, before you go, I forget, who's the fellow over there pointing at the other drunk person? Are they... Him? Sorry, I'm... I'm yes, I'm a little new. He kind of, like, sits up a little bit, squints. Uh, oh, I think I think that's Hadrian. He's another dark right. He's been here long. Him? I think it did before they hired me, and I don't remember him. Him? Oh, uh, <laughs> he's another. Uh, he's another fre frequent patron. Yeah. Ah, I'll let him sleep then. Good night, sir. And he tucks him in fully and turns around to the rest of the party. Say hey, goodbyes, kids. That guy's messed up. It's nice of you to feed him. Uh, Bill Moore says that if anyone else had questions. Say again? Uh, if you have any more questions for him before he falls asleep. Say, so, uh, before you, you uh, pass out and sleep this off, uh, what would you say you used to do at the docks? Oh, uh, I was a laborer. 
carrying crates here and there for the foremans. Supposed ever, to be there at dawn today, but don't think that happened. Probably I losing the trans for it. You have a transport any um, crates that have the uh, markings of a what is it? A black fist on it? Is that what it was? So black yep. fist or a black skull? Black, yeah, okay. black yeah, yeah. gauntleted fist. Looks like really? a black fist with a gauntlet on it. Uh, uh, no, can't say I've seen any of those. You uh, work in a high security area or a low security area? <laughs> I go wherever they tell me. He suddenly kind of has like a little dawn of inspiration on him. Oh, and there goes that disadvantage. <clears throat> and black, black fist. I don't even know what trading company that would be. Odd. Hmm. You ever handle handle cargo that isn't from a trading company necessarily? Maybe from a, a an organization that doesn't specialize in, uh, you know. The trade and sale of goods. Oh, I don't ask a lot of questions in my line of work. It's usually best not to know. Can I say with confidence I haven't? No. Can I say with confidence I have? Also, no. <laughs> Do I think I have? Absolutely. <laughs> well, it's interesting. You think your friend sleeping over there would? would know any more about that uh, black fist I was asking about? Uh, I don't know. I never got to talking about the like of that with him. Usually just bitching about our bosses. A shit lot in life. I understand that. Uh, I guess my only other question I'd have for you, sir, um, before I let you get back to your rest, is um, if I wanted to talk to someone who knew more about what I was looking for uh, regarding information uh, about cargo or uh, uh, goods that have that kind of symbol attached to it. Who would I speak to? Huh. Only one I know is the Lone Shark. Come here around oh. the evening after the sun's gone down. A Lone Shark have a have a pet with him. Uh, I wouldn't say pet, I'd more say bodyguards. He's not one bodyguards. you'd want to cross. He probably knows... Human bodyguards? Uh, one. <laughs> the other is not quite so human. Is it a kind of smaller purple creature that has spines all over it? Aye. One of them devils. <clears throat> and then he, like, shivers a little bit. I try not to be down on that lower level as much as possible. Understood. Well, I appreciate that insight. Thank you. All right, right now, if you don't mind me, uh, I think my head's about to explode. Oh, don't don't let me get in the way of you preventing your head from exploding, sir. You rest up. Uh, I guess Salvatore will turn back to the group and say, I don't know, unless somebody wants to talk to this other fellow, I think we may have expended our uh, options at learning things down here. Uh, Belmont's already starting to walk up the stairs as you say those words and turns around and says, Wah, you say something? Nope, you've read my mind. So I guess we'll just go back up. Sounds good. Um, does anybody else want to do some investigation on this floor before we headed back up to the main one? Mm, I'm good. Alright. Well, 
as we uh, get back up to the main floor, um, everybody's still here? Everybody's still hunched over a drink, moaning about their life, or just enjoying being blissfully drunk? You see that the fist patron is gone. Hitoshi Jade is passed out face down on the bar. And Lorelra is sleepy eyed, kind of just finishing a last jug. And the bouncers uh, appear to be nearly passed out. Bouncer 2 goes up to Lorelra and says, Ma'am, please, the sun's already out. Can we go home? Everyone's gone. She responds, Oh, uh, yeah. I think it's time to go to bed. Hey, put, uh, put the sailor man down below decks and then you, you all can take off. I'm gonna go take a nap. And See she you begins, all in six hours. <laughs> she begins to walk staggeringly towards her cabin. <clears throat> Slams open the door and you hear a crash as she oh. lands on her bed. Oh, okay. That'll be me in less than two hours. Uh, I look over to Hitoshi Jade. What are you up to now? He's passed out. Uh, if I still had one of the pickles or food down there, I just put it on top as this little present for him and I start walking out. All right. Um, Lulin wants to um, crawl out of Belmont's hood and drop your shape. Okay. Yeah, Be- Belmont sees you crawling out and reminds we are still in the building. And she's just going to um Squirt a little bit of her spider web at, her, at you and continue to walk down your. <laughs> and then she's still gonna change shape because she wants to go behind the bar. <laughs> you would pass that drug. Uh, the dude who's blocking the way, Bill, just keeps conversation with them. Okay. And starts walking a, a pass to more po- trying gaze eyes if he hasn't already noticed of what's behind this room? I heard a bang. Is everyone okay? Oh, are those your sex chambers? As he takes a gas. Um so I'm gonna go kinda of crawl like behind the bar and drop my form, but I'm while I'm kind of hiding down behind it. I want to like scuffle around and look around to see if there's any papers or ledgers or you know anything kind of hidden back there. All right, make me an investigation check. I find my skills. Dirty 20. Hey, with a 20. You go back behind the bar <clears throat> and begin looking around. Um, you see a coin purse, which appears to be the makeshift um, collection of coins for running the bar um, that Lorelra has left behind. Any papers or anything like that, you don't see. And then you look up to stare the bouncer right in the face as he says, "Uh, Okay, I don't know what you're doing, but we're closing. Please leave. I need to get some sleep. It's closing time. Oh, sure. Uh, I was just making sure you had enough stock of some things. Um, I'm all finished up here. Uh, You have a good rest. Not gonna ask any questions, just please go home. Yep. I mean, you have a good little rest. We'll go around the front end. 
I'll hook my arm in Salvatore's arm and um, can we uh go now? Yeah, let's let's get out of here. Okay. I'll make my way. All right. <clears throat> so, back on the docks at the front of the Low Lantern. You exit, and shortly after, you see the bouncers exit as well. And it is... Let's see. 10 o'clock in the morning. What do you do? What time are you reopening, boys? As they walk by. <laughs> Granted, we don't sleep through the night. Uh, it usually opens around noon. Oh, see you in two hours. Wait. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they are definitely grumbling as they, as you walk by. Well, I don't know, y'all. I mean, it wasn't a dead end. It was just a. Uh, it was a. We'll have to learn more later. Maybe find folks when they aren't already uh, either retired for the day or too drunk to contribute to a conversation. You think that will be happening in two hours? Well, so, uh, Leland, I don't know if you caught this or not while you were investigating as a spider, but um, Vishar and I met a very interesting uh fiendish fella named uh, um, Kashara who kind of, I guess telepathically communicated that someone might be able to give us information later but they would only be here after, and I quote dark we need to return after or under the shroud of darkness I don't know if that's just like come back at night or if we need to wear like a shroud or a hood or something I'm going to try just maybe showing up at night first but that's all I really found do we have to because they say that it's really bad and dangerous here at night time yeah well I think bad and dangerous is kind of what we signed up for at this point uh, we were also attacked in streets in um, broad daylight so I, I can't imagine it's much worse that night. <laughs> That's a fair point. Can get a nice good rest in before we come back because you know we might be up for quite a while. That's true. Um Hmm. Well I, su I suppose we could consider maybe taking a taking a little bit of a rest prior to coming back to this place and trying to actually learn something um is there i don't know anybody else know of any uh, places we might want to visit in between then and now a library oh wait no it's still costing money to copy spells in my spell book uh, say again I was trying to think of things to do, but everything costs money. I don't have a lot of money. Um, or how much? I forget how much are supplies to copy spells into a spell book. I, I first time wizard. Is there somewhere we need to go to get him a tuna? Yeah, Belmont, you tell us. Is there is there a place that you were trying to get to in this city that was going to help um, with your memory or something like that? I was hoping to find my family, but uh, blacksmith or artificers are the ones who touch me up in the family, so I'm, I, I guess one of them could attempt to take a look. I don't know anything about this city, but I'd imagine there's there's quite a few folks that make their money uh, tinkering and smithing. Uh, the dock? 
Yeah, I mean, we could just explore the docks, see what we could find. I thought maybe if there was someone there, they would maybe know and we could find out and get some direction. Yeah, that sounds like a good idea. Um, let's... I have oh, also thought say? about checking the libraries for information on whispering back to everyone the, the city itself. I think both of those are pretty dang good ideas. I mean, at this point, we're, we're starting from zero in terms of knowledge, so uh, anything new is good. We could also earn money, uh, odd jobs. You know, it's funny. I, I We were told that we would find jobs at the Lantern. We came here. I just, you know, worked for free, get, got a bunch of people drunk, and then we all, and then we everybody went to bed. They're closing. If we come when they're opening, I'm sure we'll have a better shot. Or yeah, that's true. Not at the end of the, or their end of day, but our beginning. True, it's true. Early in the morning. Bars are usually bang in in the afternoon or late night. I'm sure if we come back here after the sun has set, things will be picking up. Or... Would like to um, just have a spider on the wall. Um, I could get paid really well. Ooh, I also had another good idea. I mean, I don't need to breathe, so I could just jump underwater and start breaking a hole in the bottom to sink it and to help get me out. Lulu can just turn into something and maybe bring me to the surface. Oh, sure, but... um. <laughs> Let's think for this bitch if they don't answer our questions. Or burn it. There's always help, help me. Let's let's back let's let's back up a little second here. So so what what do we have to gain from sinking the lower lantern? Nothing. It's more of a threat. Got it. Got it. I wanna, but I still want to uh, sink it either way. I do think okay. it'd be fun. The more, the more that I come up with an idea and you start thinking about it, you kind of question if it's possible or not, but then it's just more fun watching something burn. Okay. Well, I guess we can leave that in our list of options. Uh, but, you know, maybe, maybe you, you, you seemed way more interested in going to a library, uh, like, Ooh, you know, library I, sounds yeah. fun. Yeah, the li library. Do the library. What, do we need to read a book? Can Belmont just kind of... You're sensing he's read what he was talking about a second ago. I think the artificer is a better idea. Yeah. Yeah, I think I think we could use an artificer's help. Um, I don't know. Who has a map around here? Can we pull up a map and see maybe if there's like a... A square or, or like a commerce area, with a, or, you know, somewhere we could learn where an artificer is. Well, didn't, didn't we go past it when um, those three goons jumped us from the, from, you know, the cult? Oh, or was that an artificer? The wide. The market area. I mean, that was kind of there, I think. True, true. Well, uh,. I'm I'm good with that idea if everybody else is. Um, maybe it'll get us some leads on, I don't know, anything at this point. Hey, let's go. All right. Can I bring my skunk? As long as your skunk doesn't attack anybody or or, or stink on them, I don't see why that's a problem. Oh, well, that's not very fun. <laughs> We're trying to keep the peace, but, you know. Um. Oh. Are we off? Belmar starts walking in no particular direction. And then forgets that he's in a party now and not on alone. It's, it's only been a day. Uh, where are we going? Oh, take my hand. Oh, thank you. All right, so, so I'm I'm gonna... Gonna... 
Are we headed to the wide or where are we going? I'm along for the ride. It's up to you three. I think we were going to go to the market to try and find an artificer. Okay. Size my stuff. Okay. Why don't we take a quick five minute break? I think it's a good time to take a little bit of a break. Yeah. All right. All right. <clears throat> so as I kind of get my stuff reset up, I'm um, go ahead and uh, do a bio break, get some snacks, replenish yourself, and we will rejoin in five minutes. Right on the dot at the top of the hour. Okay. Later. Okay, we are back. Hello. Welcome back. Oh, hello. Into it. That's all right. <clears throat> Does everybody see this map? Is everybody able to see it? Yeah. Of the wide. wide. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So this is the yeah. wide where you enter into. Have it on. Um, but anyway, you go to the wide in search of an artificer. What exactly do you say to the artificer that you're trying to find? Uh, sorry if you can hear my dog contributing to this conversation. Um, okay. Okay. I would, I guess we would say, is, are there any artificers, artificers here with experience tinkering with them? Um, and then I would lean over to Belmont and be like, how, what is, what, who, what are you? I'm, I need to help people, I'm a goblin. Yeah, right. I mean, I get that, but the second that we actually meet someone who can help you, they're going to know pretty much immediately that you're not. So, what would you tell them? Oh, auto. Auto no. An auto no. Got it. Uh, I used to think of myself as an auto goblin gnome. An auto goblin gnome. Okay. <laughs> Uh, well, that's what I would say. I would say looking for, for any individual that has experience tinkering and fixing up a, a, auto goblin and then side eye to you just say no. no. <laughs> okay. So you spend a bit of time going around the wide, speaking to um, different merchants and city folk alike, trying to find such an artificer that might be able to deal with a mechanical creature as Belmont. And you get quite a few odd looks. People looking at you like thinking you're playing a game, like, what are you on about? There's people that talk about um, magic shops and people who deal with magical items. Um, the art of artificing is 
kind of known, but more whispered about as if mythical. You are unable to find anybody that you feel confident would be able to help Belmont. At least now, at least here at this present moment. Uh, in the very shops that we were visiting, was there, I don't know, any locations that might deal in, uh, like, fine arts or rarities? Yes. Are you trying to sell me? <laughs> <laughs> no, Belmont, I'm not trying to sell you. I'm just curious, maybe there's a possibility that someone who knows a lot about the more rare things in this city could point us in the right direction regarding the the the, the group that has been hunting us. It does kind of expose us, though, if we just start asking random questions around, hey, have you seen any folks with a black gauntlet symbol on their shields swinging swords on folks? That like, doesn't really land well, so if anybody else has ideas, I'm wide open. Mm. Well, just looking around, do I see anyone with that description? So what you know about Baldur's Gate find it. There is the High House of Wonders which is a temple of Gond. <clears throat> there are many different wondrous items crafted and housed in the High House of Wonders, which it's entirely possible that you might be able to find something out that would help Belmont. I think we should go there. Ooh. Looks like our best bet so far. No arguments there. Hey, Bisharo, do you think that's okay? Um, yeah, it's, I don't see why it wouldn't be. It looked like fun. I'll say if we can learn something, maybe meet some new people, and get a better lay of the land, that's a net positive. I'll be on my best behavior. I look forward to seeing that, Leland. And I believe you. <laughs> she smiles, uh, smiles slyly at you. Uh-huh. <laughs> okay, so is that where we're going? Uh-huh. Yeah. Okay. I need one person to roll me a d20. Mm -hmm. I almost killed us, so I'll let somebody else do it. <laughs> I rolled it. Okay. You make your way to the southwest from the wide where you know that the hall, the High House of Wonders, is located. And without incident, you're able to get there. <clears throat> A few times on the way, I, I start stumbling off at all the pretty sights, and you just have to pull me back. I'm sure Percy even uh, tries to assist you guys multiple times. He's used to it. I'm trying to find this thing, but it's not... Oh, there we go. Okay. You see a large... A large stately building serving as a quasi-religious museum for the magnificent inventions wrought in Gon's name. That's the Hall of One. Jesus. 
There we go. Okay. The High House of Wonders. This vast workshop is the center of Gon's religion in Baldur's Gate. Every day, the anvils and work tables that fill the High House of Wonders ring with the clamor of hammer and saw. Under the scrutiny of the meticulous High Artificer Andar Beach, a, ma a male human, inventors work alongside priests and acolytes beside masters of all disciplines. Because the creations in these workshops are largely experimental prototypes, they are not deemed fit for public view. <laughs> As you We're approach, you hear the sounds coming from it. It sounds like the place to be to you, Belmont. You feel mm. this welling anxiety within you as well though at the same time at the same time you're beginning to feel very confident that this is probably the exact place that you would need to go to figure out how to solve your problem but at the same time it would reveal all of your secrets they would have to work mm -hmm. on you and they would have to investigate in order to find what needs fixing. You want to go inside. Um, Belmont kind of clenches and grabs the nearest ally to him, uh, before, like, before even getting to the doorway kind of thing. So it's not like too close yet as we uh, approach. I'm getting uh, uneasy. Um. We don't have to do anything that you don't want to do, Belmont. If this is making you uncomfortable, we'll all back out right now. It might help you so that you can think and talk better and, and feel better, too. We could also just go in and you maybe learn a little bit. I, I, I'm fine with that. I just... Not everyone appreciates goblins. Oh, I know. But if they get nasty, I'll get out flour. And you know, when um, Lulin gets out flour, I, I tend to get out my sword too. So no matter what happens, yeah, we got your back. No obligations. We can just go in, ask some questions, learn a little bit. And if you're feeling comfortable, we'll see where it takes us. What did you say, Salvatore? Oh, um, I just said no pressure, no obligations. We can just go in, see what we can <laughs> learn, and, and then uh, see where the questions take us. Yes. So, Thelma, do you want to? I will go for the, 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 the team. It's really if it has any answers to my family. Yeah. I have faint memories of passing this place, but I can't remember much of anything anymore. Oh, you think you've been here before? We travel, and I've been around for a while. So, uh, I guess let me ask a different question. Same time looks distant. Do you know if the last time you were here you looked the way you look now? Are people going to recognize you? Mm. I can't say. I don't remember when I've been here. All right, I've been well, around for a long time. Let's go find out. And Salvatore will start walking towards the entrance to see if anybody follows. I'm going to grab... I'm sure it will follow behind him. And I'll grab uh, Belmont's hand. Encourage him. It's going to be okay. We got you. Thank you.
All right. You enter to hear the clamor of everything louder, louder. People are working and plying on their trades. <clears throat> and upon entering, you see quite an assortment of different figures and represented races. One human actually approaches you quite quickly. Easy, easy there. Hold up, hold up. Don't come any further. It's dangerous in here. Dangerous? Oh, dear. Hi. Uh, never know when one of the contraptions is going to explode. Uh, entirely experimental. Can I help you with something? Ah. Uh, Here, kind of try at least stays behind everyone. I don't know about that. I don't think I meant for it. His memory's not real good, and he gets a little confused, and I think he needs a tune-up. We just kind of need to know if there's anyone that might be able to help. He squints his eyes at that uh, tune-up. Uh, sorry, what do you mean? Oh, he's an auto, you know, an auto thing? Yeah. Do you mean to say in, in a mechanical person? Yes. That's <laughs> what it is. Oh, the... Uh, Oh, I see. We are jesting. <laughs> uh, no, mechanical no, auto uh, auto persons uh, is is a actually a tightly kept secret in trade. Have not yet been able to uh, make it work yet. Oh. Well, he works kind of. His his he's got a a familiar that said. Um, he gets a little rusty, and then he gets confused and, um, forgetful. And that sometimes he just needs to get a good tune-up. And so we're looking for a tune-up. He looks between Lulin and the others of you, and then he sees... Belmont. Completely covered up and bandaged. Mm -hmm. And begins to hear the ticking. All of a sudden, his eyes open wide. And he says, you, quickly, hush, shh, quiet, come with me. And then we, uh, we, we, we we're, we're a package deal here, sir. It's fine, fine, come, quickly, for too many eyes, look. Then he ushers you over to a workbench off kind of on the side. And then he kind of scans around to see if anyone is looking whatever everybody is definitely uh seems to be um preoccupied in their current dealings whatever inventions they're working on and then he looks closer at belmont <laughs> well i'll be you were telling the truth <laughs> Do you mind? And then he reaches out to kind of like take some of the bandages in order to to move them. Um, he grips the bandages tightly for a second with a heavy pause. It's probably oh. a good fifteen seconds of him just thinking, and then he looks at everyone and starts unraveling it himself, and allows him to unravel as well. I'm going to look at attention. I'm yes, going to look at Salvatore and say, tell the truth. What did you think about him? I don't lie. He's crazy. I don't know. I mean, imagine someone just going up to a stranger and telling a lie like that. That doesn't make any sense to me. Oh, and I guess. As you see, um, oh, yeah. sorry. I guess people do that, huh? I mean, I don't do that. You don't do that. I, yeah. I don't think Belmont does that. Bashara hasn't done that as far as I know. Some people just are untrusting, I guess. I see. Um, while uh, uh, Belmont was um, hesitating over whether or not to un unwrap Salvatore, um, not quickly, but just like really slowly, kind of drifted his hand up to his sword hilt, not wrapping his hand around the hilt or anything, just kind of like 
gauging the situation, seeing where Belmont was at and seeing if other people were kind of like starting to notice what was going on here. Um, feeling a little skeptical of the, of the safety of the surroundings. And with that hesitation, uh, Belmont begins to unwrap the bandages and then casts Fireball on everyone. No. Um, he and the bandages are quite old. Um, you can tell that he's been rattled up for a long time. Uh, taking off the top layers is dirty, as underneath there's a little more, like, a little less dirty. And unwrapping, there's even more bandages, but these uh, are like, ancient, like, from white to tan, if they ever were. Um, stained over with all kinds of who knows what. Um, and some of them, as it continues at the end, are disintegrating. They're, uh, like, not disintegrating like, from hit by a ray or something, but, you know, like, very old fabric just kind of falls apart very easily. Um, and reveals his ancient crafted, partially rusted in some areas, um, oxidized from any copper that might be on him as well. Actually, I think there'd be a good amount because I might go with the goblin. I like that, the copper idea. Um, kind of bronze, or um, made that green over there. Mm -hmm. And taking the mask off as well, which you guys have seen him do reveals, uh, as he has described, a goblin, but completely auto uh, mechanical. And you like see the this. Pointy ears, the see this slow process. As he removes some of the bandaging, reveal the form beneath. There's, yes, a bit of oxidization, maybe a little bit of rust, staining, blemishing. But he is indeed a mechanical goblin, down to every detail. Huh. And Hello? the man who brought you over is just staring wide-eyed in excitement, muttering to himself, Oh my, my, mechanical wonder. I wonder how they got the transfixer to work in the orbital reducer? Oh, I can't wait to dig my hands into this. You, you said there was an issue. Um, what, what would that be? Well, he will forget what he's saying sometimes, or forget, like, you know, from several minutes to several minutes and gets confused. Um, it, it, a little, it, in those a moments, little. you see me start sparking a little bit and twitching. And I sent a pretty good gif re resembling what um, I was describing. From yes, the treasure planet movie. I love that movie. No, everyone, no one ever remembers that. He, he helped me inspire this character. Which I was gonna be normal, and then I just saw clips and rewatched the movie, and I was like, <laughs> "Wait, I want to be broken." Like, no. he looks to you and says, uh, we'll, "We'll probably want to bandage you up quite quickly now." Uh, to be honest, um, as I said, this is a very tightly kept secret. Um, Auto persons have not yet been fully fleshed out, so to speak. Um, you would cause an uproar. Let's 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 get you covered up. And he sighs after unraveling <laughs> all those bandages. Uh, I see. There's a bit of a uh, short circuit in here. Um. Do you mind? And then he like moves to like kind of open you up and look inside a little bit. Mm. In that moment, he um, has been trying to be proper for a second and then snaps her again. Uh, mm, before the first date. <laughs> you see what I mean? <laughs> oh, it is odd. An entirely original personality and everything. Like, they, hmm. he definitely has the split between the two, and it, you do notice sometimes he forgets uh, between the two as well. He looks at some of the uh, inner workings, and after a couple minutes, scratching his chin, the man looks back at you. Oh, must say, he is a wonder. Um, 
perhaps a little bit out of my expertise, but if you give me a measure of time, I'm certain I could probably diagnose something that could point you in the right direction, at least. It would take the better part of half of the day, however. That sounds okay, doesn't it, Belmont? Will I still be able to drink for the party tonight? Oh, I, I wouldn't suggest drinking at all. Um, uh, w moisture in your in your mechanisms tends not to work so well. You telling me this guy could just uh, get sober and all of his problems could get solved? Is that what I'm hearing, right? Belmont, have you not been saucing it? I don't drink or eat. Well, okay, I, I thought I heard solved. you say you were you were enjoying something at the at the low lantern. My apologies. I apologize, sir. I think you'd be confused with someone else. Must be. <laughs> the woman puts her head in her hand. <laughs> well, Belmont, it's your call. I mean, we got you. Uh, we, won't, we won't leave you stranded here or anything. I always have Percy. I've been with him longer than anyone else. That's still alive, at least. I think I'll be okay. You all play. Have fun out there. Let us old people talk. Okay, sounds good. Uh, so, what time do you think we should come back? It is 12 o'clock p.m. at this time. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. Uh, the man responds to you saying that it would probably take about half a day's work which would be like four hours okay. uh, I would line us up with about when we needed to get back to the lantern to learn more about um, that uh, Kashara's master mm -hmm. it might even be better to, to wait to go to later most bars don't get popping until the sun is fully set if you wait until at least, like, eight, we'd have plenty of time even through the night. They said they partied all night long. I assume they do it every night. That mess they had, they at least did it before. That's a fair point. Uh, I lack promptness, but I suppose we should slow down a little bit for those who want to to enjoy their You're libations. You're the first the party. You'll never meet the cool kids. <laughs> well... They always never claim to be a cool kid. Uh, but, you know, we, we can still wait around. They know how to party. Did we ever learn this uh, uh, artificer's name? Uh, you did not. Oh, yeah, what was it? Oh. oh uh, before just... you put your hand in me again, what is your name? Oh, uh, <laughs> I suppose we haven't uh, introduced ourselves. Um, you, you can call me Andrin. <laughs> Andrew, nice to meet you. I'm Salvatore. Oh, well, yeah, nice. This is Bashara. Uh, so, so say, uh, Andrin, um, you know, we don't really want to leave our friend here alone, um, but I don't know, is there anything nearby that we could, uh, go check out to learn more about the city, um, while, while you do your work? Oh, uh, well, it's quite tedious and boring to, to some, but you're, you're more than welcome to stay. Um, someone to bounce ideas off of isn't, isn't always the worst. Um, but if you're, if you're looking to go about the city, there is always the statue of, of the, the heroes that you can check out. It's a good bit of history there. Uh, I mean, in my opinion, I, I think that um, whatever Belmont is most comfortable with, uh, I'm perfectly okay with uh i don't feel totally comfortable splitting up if if i'm being honest well, i'll be honest i barely know you people still so i don't care either way i appreciate the friendships that we've had but it's only been a day and he winks at you yeah let me let me rephrase this uh and and, and salvatore kind of just like gets kind of close to belmont and uh 
uh, just says under his breath, like, we kind of need you, uh, not to, not to be blunt, but, um, did you notice how pretty much wherever we go, we kind of find a little bit of a, a scuffle? I didn't the last fight you had started because you fought people? You started Well, I wouldn't fight. say we fought because we fight. I'd say that we fight because we believe in doing the right thing and you know we're on a mission and it, was a it seems that... you literally the first fight and the only fight i have been a part of was a tavern brawl that you started yeah well they i mean they started it actually that's not true it was a misunderstanding anyway my point is we, we aren't here just to like you know ruin people's days we're actually here for a good reason and um you know i guess what i'm saying is we could use your help and you know we don't want to leave you behind uh it seems like i am you know, so we're... happy you just made that clear though because i th i honestly thought we were the villains for a second there i wasn't quite <laughs> sure that i was just tagging along but i'm happy you made that clear for me now yeah I, did, I didn't know if it was an open question or not so I, I guess i'm glad i clarified as well thanks for saying that um yeah, that, yeah, that was no, just unfortunate thing, timing. Was on people so I, I didn't know where we were going well you know what sometimes sometimes you gotta acid someone you know what i mean especially really if hard they're <laughs> the bad guys uh but you know look uh I think it would be a good idea for us maybe just to like hang out and stick stick together because um you know in this moment always... when you say stick together you see him trying to he's only four feet tall I'm just visualizing the workbench about that or a little taller or something so he's just an old robot trying to pull himself to the top and really struggling and kind of looking at you not asking for help but looks like he's yeah definitely help definitely help him out definitely help him up uh, I just sit up there uh, and kick my legs like a little kid. Uh, I trust you. Look, whether whether we intended for this to happen or not, we're kind of in it together now. We've been all over the city. Folks have seen us. Um, you know, we we owe you some explanations because I think we kind of skipped over some of the um, some of the details. You know, I know we gave you the background on what happened at El Terrell, but um, you know. We'd appreciate you giving us the chance to, to prove that we aren't the bad guys. I am honored to be your companion and more excited to see where this goes. Yeah, I guess I am too. Uh, goes anyway. So many things. It's brought... Such horrible things have brought us together. But I see goodness definitely see goodness in you of all. Salvatore will remember the, the fiendish um, I guess remains, for lack of a better word, that he sensed on uh, Belmont when he did Divine Sense prior to entering Low Lantern and just put, put his hand on his shoulder and uh, says, you know what, Belmont, I uh, appreciate that and uh, just feel the same way. Um, now, you know, if you want to get down to business, um, we won't stop you, but, you know, it kind of feels like we're, we're crossing a Rubicon and one way or another, we got to make a decision. You letting this guy in you again or what? I won't lie. I'm, I'm a bit scared. I'm going against protocol of my family and revealing myself already, but if my interruptions are getting in the way, then I will trust in the people you bring me to uh, to cure me. It is a gift that you brought me here, and at least in your attempt, I'm willing to try. A spirit. Just keep my secret as your secret as well, is all I ask. Yeah, my word. It does not. Yeah. What secret? I like the way you think. <laughs> Thanks. Um, yeah, so, I don't know. Do you want me to, like, hold your hand or something? Oh, 
Okay. Okay. <laughs> you hold this hand out. Yeah. I'll take it. Me or Handy squeezing his staff. I'll just take a step back to make some space and look over to uh, Andre and say, everything above board, you hear me? Oh, uh, certainly, certainly. All right. Okay, mechanic, are you ready for round two? <laughs> Hmm. All right. <clears throat> so, you settle down to allow Andrin to work his magic, diagnosing what's going on with Belmont and how some of this stuff works. You sit there, conversing with yourselves, waiting patiently as the hours go by. Just like he said, about four hours later, Andrin, covered in grease. A little bit of nyx from working with the sharp metal and such. Removes himself with a long, contented sigh. Oh. <laughs> well, I say, I've probably... I think I've learned more in, in these four hours than years spent at this high house of wonders. He is a marvel. Uh, Belmont. I think I have some sort of idea of what's going on, but I, I dare say it, it's a bit more worrisome. Are you and quite in that sure moment, you're you prepared? Are you quite sure you're prepared to hear it? Uh, in that moment, you see Belmont just smoking a cigar <laughs> next few hours a lot has happened <laughs> oh <laughs> thank my you for your goodness. time and... all right lat straight dog what is wrong <sighs> well um figured out the ways that your transponders connect together and the orbital reducers um um right Fascinating how how it's all been worked together, but I, I won't bore you with with the specifics. Um, but as with the original issue with the auto persons, is a, 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 a powerful enough energy system, something that can replicate a soul, which <laughs> it's quite impossible unless you have divine power. Uh, we've experimented with magics and, and, and different batteries of such, but nothing has been made substantial enough. Um, but it appears there is something. Um, it is not exactly of this world, however. You, Belmont, are powered by... Well, there's no other way to put it. You have an infernal engine inside you. And you see him have a horrified, shocked face for a second. And then stops and pauses and says, wait, I already knew that. Oh! Hell? You already kn oh, well, that could have saved a little bit of trouble. <laughs> uh, finicky little uh, bugger, isn't he? Well, she did tell you so. Lulin did say. It's got a thing about words. Uh, no matter, no matter. It's been quite exciting. Um... Well, so, the Infernal Engine powers you. Um, but, uh, that is the problem in and of itself. It requires... It requires extensive diagnostics to keep its power in check so it doesn't consume the others. My, my suspicion is you have missed these diagnostics and it's began to erode some of the inner workings. It has been, like, right, it's been a couple of months or weeks since the town sank, or city sank. Um, it's been... A little before then, too. Uh, it's been a 10-day. Yeah. 10 Oof. days, okay. And then on their travels, it probably have been at least, like, a couple of weeks, so yeah. Yeah. I... 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 
believe you're right. My memory gets faster each morning. So, what does that mean? What do we have to do? How, how are we gonna help him? Oh, okay, well, dying. that is the big question. Um, I'm gonna have to find some way of containing the infernal engine energy. Some sort of, um, some sort of better, uh, what's the word for it? Insulation? Though, <laughs> not quite certain there is any type of metal insulation of this world that could help with that. It would take... In world, well, it doesn't work. It will take greater minds than mine. Where will I, we find them? Well, you are at the High House of Wonders. Um, if there is anybody, I, I would sus suspect it would be the High Artificer. He is a busy man, though. Sounds like he might make an exception for someone so exceptional. Ah, true. That is true. You would definitely get an audience, though there are some types around here that would be loath to see Belmont uh, leave, if you get my meaning. You worried the boss might uh, uh, make some poor decisions? Oh, no, not poor decisions, Very just different. ones that may not align with your own personal ones. Mm-hmm. They want to experiment on him. All right, and, and just, uh, you know, thought experiment. Who else that doesn't work here might know something about some information we're looking for? Or where oh. else could we find more information? Because oh. I can tell you this much, you're not getting a, We're not leaving with one less person in our party. Oh, certainly, certainly. I wouldn't dream of it. Um... Well, uh, yeah, if there's any place in Baldur's Gate, it would likely be here. Um, along the Sword Coast, there are many different um, houses and locations of great knowledge. Um, Candlekeep definitely houses a lot. Um, it's not too far away. If you are looking for travel, um, Candlekeep might be the place to go. I do like... Oh, I have fond memories of Candlekeep. Whereas oh. we are a house of uh, in invention, uh, mechanical and, and, and the such, with a little bit of magic, of course. Um, Candlekeep is, is much more versed in that of the arcane. And perhaps it is the arcane that you need help? I don't know. That's, I think that sounds pretty good. What do you guys think? The Shara? I like You're it. Quiet. My creator first studied at Candlekeep. It's been a long time since I was back there. And you see I'm not twitching. This is an actual memory, not just a malfunctioning. The Shara, what do you think about leaving the city? Um, I think... Sorry, I... Donovan's on out for a little bit. That's alright. Um, so basically what happened is, um... Belmont was looked at by, um, this engineer artificer guy. And it's been determined that he has an infernal engine inside him and... The diagnostics have not been being done on him, and so the power of the Infernal en Engine is kind of wearing away some of his circuitry and mechanisms inside. And there is thought that um, better insulation for the um, Infernal Engine would help so that uh, the other circuits and, and stuff can be fixed, and then the diagnostics would work and everything. Um, 
but they don't want to reveal too much to the people here because Belmont might be taken captive, experimented on. Um, but it is said that Candlekeep is nearby. It is another um, like city-state thing. And whereas the High House of Wonders is um, more about mechanical invention and innovation, um, Candlekeep would be um, more along the arcane. So if you're searching for answers on how to help, Candlekeep might be a good next stop. I mean, I would say that um, we do have some unfinished business in the city. Uh, I think uh, Candlekeep can definitely be like a shortlist next stop. But, you know, maybe while we're here, we can we can tie up some loose ends and then uh, make our way to, to the next place. I mean, we still got to look into the bathhouse a little bit more, right? And then it looks like we might be able to gain some information about the city or, or the ne'er-do-wells that have attacked us um, the, at the Low Lantern uh, later tonight. Um, but open open to suggestions or other ideas. I would try. Whatever you want. It Every seems my destiny I... points to Candlekeep. But I follow the party. Every time you say tie up loose ends, you end up with more loose ends. Well, sometimes, you know, you just got to pull the thread till it runs out, and then you tie up the loose ends. <laughs> what if we just burn them all down? Well, that might end up happening as a result of us trying to tie up the loose ends, to be honest. But first, we got to find out if we have to or not. I mean, we can just set the fire to the the ship, and then we can just go to the bathhouse and set fire there. And it yeah, seems but well, Belmont, there's, just there's innocent folk around. there. There's, there's innocent people. They're just trying to live their lives. We can't just set them on fire. And if they're innocent, wouldn't they just walk away from the fire? I don't walk into fire. Belmont, why would a person that does bad things walk into or stay in a fire? Because they know they deserve it. That's an interesting theory. Uh, but uh, I'm gonna say let's wait to burn folks down until we know we gotta burn folks down very well no one ever lets me burn things anymore Granny Belmont I more. promise I promise to you I will find you something to burn down you promise I promise then I shall follow you into the night <laughs> I start wrapping myself up in bandages again. It probably takes a good, like, ten minutes at least. Well, I'll um, turn to Vishara and... Help them people. Yeah, I mean, Vishara and Lulin, I mean, uh, let's let's hear your thoughts. Um, uh, do we do we just want to bail, or uh, should, should we stick around, try and figure out what the heck is actually going on in this city before going to Candlekeep? Well, I think we could go ahead and go back to the Low Lantern, and then, um, depending on what we find out, you know, we can talk about it again then, but, I mean, we could always go to Candlekeep and come back. I like that. Maybe. It is all, it's four now, so we can hang out or find something to do in town and then go to, um, the little, the, the bar place we were just at, uh, again once it seems like it's a good time to meet with them. And then if you guys are okay with it, then they said it wasn't far, but at least just check up on that and we can come right back. Day trip, if it's that close. Be great. I like the sound of that. Maybe I can visit my friends. Maybe we'll find my family on the way and all our problems will be solved too. And yet, so without thinking of for a second. Sorry, I just really missed them. Well, I'm glad we all have some things to look forward to. Uh, sounds like a plan, I guess. Um, his next move, uh, shoot, I don't know. Mosey through town, find something to do. Then head to the the lantern
So you have a few options before you. There is still the bathhouse that um, that agent from the Thieves Guild. Um, he he talked about Tarina that she had information that could point you in the direction. Tarina revealed that the cult comes in and out of the bathhouse. There is mm -hmm. the low lantern where you have um, found that lone shark that he might be able to um, be paid for information. And then there is this line, which is towards uh, Belmont's kind of personal story, which would lead you to Candlekeep. Have you any idea what you're doing here? Oh, I thought we were kind of leaning towards going back. Well, but it's too early to go back to the bath, to the lantern. So the bathhouse probably. And then to the um, low lantern. I think the bathhouse was also a nighttime thing. Yeah. Okay. So I don't know. I mean, uh, I I would be cool with like just. How long would it take us to get to the lantern? Uh, uh maybe thirty, forty-five minutes. Got how long okay, it takes to get from one one part of a town to another. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Uh And like I know, we gotta the, kill some the other time. thing, like that's yeah, exactly. Like that's the other thing. You can just like kill time and, and skip forward to whatever time. Like you don't have to find something to do right now. You can also say, okay, we're gonna go to the bathhouse when it gets dark out and then we can go to that too. Yeah. Oh. Sell our bodies yeah. on the streets for extra cash while we wait. <laughs> Let's get you fixed up before we before we tr we got to get top dollar for you. You know what I mean? As you try to assist putting any of his bandages or jacket on her cloak, I mean, um, he brushes you away, uh, not accepting his idea as a good idea with everyone else's, and kind of twitches as he fritzes out again. Fair enough. Um, so is our, uh, play, dare I say it, fast traveling? Yeah. Yeah, okay. we'll just go fast forward to the bathhouse. <laughs> we all have that zooming motion. All right. <clears throat> or wait, 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 the bathhouse or the lantern? Oh, yeah, I thought we were on the lantern. The lantern. Okay. I'm trying for you, okay. lantern. Okay. I just kind of want to see if we can learn anything more about the bad, the bad cultists, and and uh, like maybe a Did way in to the back with the boss, right? In that Person. second area, so we should be able yeah. to walk straight down this time. Yeah, I also think we could probably find it, like maybe buy our way into like an alternative entry, or like just learning how to get into that secret area. When Ooh, we get clever. here, do we see the ravens up top? Yes, so you arrive back to the area of the Low Lantern on the docks. This time moving forward a little bit more carefully, keeping an eye out for the ravens above. You do see them. From a distance away, you're able to scan the Low Lantern. You come and go from the deck of the ship, but the ravens remain. They look to be having some keen interest in the people coming and going. Oh, because it, it would affect some players. Because um, we did like the just speed up time to when it's darker. Would we either have a long or short rest or, or probably just short rest in that time? Yeah, short rest. I don't know Druid gets their wild shape back during the short rest. I don't think so. I'm pretty sure they play a druid in one of the other games. It's for rest. We're only level two. Wild shape. Yeah, it's a wild shape. You get back on a short rest. Okay. Awesome. Cool. Um, so those ravens are still there. Um, I don't know, y'all, you 
Should we just I should we just to jump in? Try to distract um, and send my owl out in one direction. I can't guarantee it would take both of them, but or I could catch cast magic missile and just kill them. Well, I mean, they saw us the last time we were here, and it wasn't a problem. I mean, the other side of this is, you know, we've seen them and they've seen us. So whoever's whoever they're helping or whatever, um, they already know we're here. I don't know what more damage can be done if we're trying to be sneaky. As you say that, I just start walking forward then. Let's go, let's go, let's go inside. Let's, let's maybe we can meet some new folks, new friends. Maybe Hitoshi's there. I say, wee! I'm gonna make friends! There you go, there you I'm go. I'm coming, Yatoshi. <laughs> um. Right. <clears throat> so, you crest the bridge, moving up to the deck of the Low Lantern, permanently docked. You move across the same deck that you had just this morning. Move down into the tap room below. The ravens above stare at you silently, perhaps ominously, watching you pass. Not oh, moving, the not making any sound. Again. You go down into the tap room where you he hear the same boisterous sounds as you had previously. Only now it is late in the evening. And this is where we will end our session. Thank you so much out there for being here, tuning in with us, and joining us at the Tavern League. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you had a good time. Make sure to um, leave a like, follow, subscribe, all that good stuff. Um, subscribe through YouTube, of course. I got the YouTube stuff. I'm on Twitter. Definitely don't really use that a whole lot, but get a hold of me on Discord. I, I talk on Discord. Um, I see your messages. I'm not able to respond as perfectly as I once was, but I definitely see it all, and I try to respond as soon as I can. Um, check out my Games Master profile on startplayinggames.com to check into this campaign as well as me Hopefully starting up another campaign, which we're looking at uh, Sundays early, so like 8 a.m., really early, but that's the only time the wife is going to allow me, because the afternoons are hers, she says, and <laughs> we don't argue with that. Love the wife. Um, but yeah, hopefully starting up a new campaign. It looks like it might be Curse of Strahd. So, if you are interested in that, check out my Games Master profile on Start Playing Games. Check me out on Discord, join the Discord, uh, send me a message, say hello, let's talk, let's chat. Um, but other than that, it is time to go. Thank you so much for your support, I hope you had a great time. But all of the adventures are lined up at the bar because the final call is sounded. And everybody is just ready to get out of the bar for our tale is ended. Thank you so much for being here with us. This has been Tavern.